In this clip, Kevin Henney speaks on the concept of modularity, non-modularity, and how it's one of the most important traits of a well-written program. So, there is a term modularity which I kind of came up with a number of years ago when doing my master's degree because I was trying to describe the properties of a good program and modularity, which we'll come to in a moment, but I also wanted to talk about modularity. And I did actually include this definition in a previous ACCU talk, which now I find depressingly somehow is a quarter of a century ago. Um, a measure of the correspondence between the components of the problem being modeled and those in its solution. Okay, so there's kind of, we've got an idea here of like, I can look, I'm looking at source code, and I've got a concept, and I can go, oh yeah, that fits in my conversation. That's how we think about it and how we talk about it. Um, and that idea of modularity is quite important. We often find a disconnect. Sometimes with code, we find a disconnect. You go like, what's going on here? Somebody explains it to you, and you go, so well, you could have written that. In fact, I've even had code reviews, a code review where I, I spoke to somebody and they kind of gave me a beautiful sketch on the, on the board and walked it through. And I go, okay, that makes sense. And then we looked at the code and then after, I don't know, 20 minutes or so, I said, I'm a bit concerned. Um, I'm a bit concerned. None of the things that are on the board are in the code. In other words, you've got this description up there and all the names and all the relationships appear to be different in the code. And he said, oh yeah, that's how I think about it, but I'd have to change the code to make it look like that and I don't want to change the code. And it's just like, yeah, that's a bit of a problem. That's a very you problem, but what about the us problem? Um, we would like to be able to come back to this code and understand it without trying to read your mind. Well, it may seem like a minor issue, this mismatch between a developer's mental model and the actual code is not just about convenience, it's about conserving your most limited and valuable resource, cognitive capacity. When code doesn't reflect the way we naturally think about the problem, or the way we explain it on a whiteboard, we are forced to constantly translate between abstract concepts and messy implementations. This mental translation creates cognitive load, and every time we do it, we waste effort that could be better spent solving actual problems. Which brings to mind this clip on Ward Cunningham, the inventor of the wiki's take on clean code. And I asked Ward, Ward, what's clean code? And he said this, you know you're working on clean code when each routine you read turns out to be pretty much what you expected. When's the last time you read code? And as you're reading it, it was pretty much what you expected. You're reading along and you're going, yeah, yes, yep, yeah, mm-hmm, yep, yep, yes, mm-hmm, yep, yep. When's the last time you had that experience? What he's saying is, no WTFs per minute, zero. Clean code is no surprises, no WTFs. Everything is pretty much what you expected. That's good clean code. Which is what Kevin Henney was getting to in some sense. Each violation in expectation is a surprise, and one new mapping to take into account to understand the code as a whole. Thoughts? Subscribe for more.